Greetings, I am Ian Shadden, a technical account manager here at Emergent Game Technologies. In this video set, I'll be going over the basics for the 3DS Max tools. Initial setup, where all the key buttons are, interfaces and their usages, and the Gamebryo shader. For reference, I will be using 3DS Max 2008. During the installation process, the uh, Gamebryo installer should have asked you to install the Maya and Max plugins, and you should have selected appropriately. If you've done so, then everything is good to go for this next setup phase. Right, so first we need to bring in the tools. So let's go ahead up and go into Customize, Customize User Interface, Toolbars, Load, and then select the appropriate CUI file for the version of Max you're running. I'm running 2008, so Max 2008, open. There we go, get our tools right over there on the side. Also just a note, we also have in the Utilities panel, we have a Gamebryo plugin in here, so we can bring that up. This allows us a few other things to do, like edit our process scripts and edit our exporter script, but, you know, we'll get to that later. Just be aware, it is there. Okay, so let's start going over our buttons over here on the side. First one's going to be to export the entire scene. Bring up our little dialog here, drop it out as a NIF. Next one is going to be by selected, get the little data line box in there. Brings up the same panel, but it only do what you have selected in the scene. Next little button here will be our export options. So in here we can, you know, define whether or not we convert our cameras and our lights, and we have our scripts for our process and our export. We can define our define our scene mesh profiles. Uh, what to do with our textures, animation. If we have a platform specific sort of dump we're trying to do, we can define that in here. Uh, texture quality. Also through here, we can go in and we can edit our scripts. So we can add in a whole bunch of other nice little utility tools and some debugging stuff. And that's about that for there. Click OK to save your options. Next little button is going to bring up the DirectX viewer. It loads it up off screen. Uh, pardon the uh, mess that Camtasia makes out of the screen with it. So unfortunately, it's nothing in the scene. So let's see, box. I will not use the boxes as a free joke when running in Max. And then we bring it up. And there's our cube. And then the next button will do the same thing, except only with selected. Then we have preview with the uh, Gamerio Asset Viewer. So it'll bring up our Asset Viewer. You can check it out in there. My preferred way of viewing this. You can also see, since we had converting lights on, the two basic lights for uh, Max actually get converted and dropped in. Next button here, we don't have any animation, but this would bring up the animation viewer if we had a character set up and the, uh, the whole, uh, well, what the next button does. So that would bring up our actual animation tool. So yeah, the next button, uh, the animation manager. This will allow us to uh, create our characters, add the roots, their accumulation roots, Create a whole bunch of sequences uh, so that when we go to export, all of our animations will be exported appropriately. This is used in conjunction with the animation tool. So to get at it, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and add our cube here as our character root. It's an awesome character. Yes, it is. And you'll notice that it picked it as an accumulation root. And now we now have a known layer root here. Uh, we can get into the animation stuff uh, later about adding layers and such. But the big thing to know is that now we have an empty sequence at, it'll automatically name an, a sequence and put it in. So I'm just gonna name it walk. Then we can come down here and we can talk about looping, start frame, end frame. Uh, you can use the time slider to say, you know, in now, and it'll adjust the timeline accordingly, uh, make the timeline for it. And we can also get into accumulation at a later date, but that's also done through here. And our sequence tags, so info tags, morph tags, things of that sort. So that's all done through here. Go ahead and remove that, close that up. Next, we have our compression utility. Um, this is pretty cool. It'll go ahead and uh, remove the keys. This should use max built-in functionality, so pretty cool. Then we go on down to bone LED. Like in Maya, this will set up uh, central animation LODs. So, you know, you get a guy walking at 300 yards. You don't want his ankle or his knee to move because at 300 yards, you can't tell. 
maybe at 150 you get his knee to move back in and then maybe at 50 his ankles start kicking in again this is where you'd set up that kind of information for your character then we have uh gambrio level of detail so this will allow you to set up your level of detail groups for uh your your heavy heavy polygon characters and then we're going to get into the portal utility um this one's a lot different than the uh Maya version, and instead of defining something as a door, as a room, as a window, that sort of thing, we come in here and we define our rooms and then our portal management, you know, which way they go. Uh, we'll get more in depth with this later at a later time. Uh, we have our billboard button. So this will go ahead and make our cube a billboard. So let's go ahead and say uh, center, apply to selection. And then we'll go ahead and bring up our asset viewer. And it doesn't look like anything changed, but as you can see, I'm trying to rotate around, but it's still pointing at the camera. So it'll create a billboard for you. Okay, so next up, we have our optimization options. So this will allow us to optimize or do not optimize this. There's a, a way that we go through when we optimize the scene graph is that if we have a whole bunch of mesh objects and they're just sort of sitting around underneath the scene node, we're not going to say that this is a cube and then we're going to have a sphere in there as well and a teapot. No, these are all going to get dumped out as one mesh. But what we can do to avoid that is by selecting an object saying do not op optimize this and applying that. This cube will be separated, but the sphere and the teapot will be joined as a single mesh within the node structure. Just something to keep in mind as you're going through and you might notice that, hey, I have like five objects in the scene, but I'm looking at my scene graph now and something's missing. More than likely, you just need to either not optimize it or there's actually a, a process script that we can remove that actually does that. And then next up, we have our Z-Buffer helper. So read, write, uh, has to do with transparency, sorting, layering, that sort of thing. We'll get into that later as well. Okay, so the next button is going to, well, the next three buttons, we'll get into those. First one's going to add or remove the um, Gamerio specific options to a texture map. So we'll bring up our material editor here. And we'll see that I already have a, a texture applied here. I actually have a um, image applied to the, my diffuse color. So you see, it looks pretty normal. Everything's pretty standard. But now that it's open and in here, we can hit this button and I'll go ahead and add our optimization features. So we can add the specific optimization features for, let's say, our platform, how we want it compressed, what bit depth, et cetera, et cetera, on down the line. So this can be added in here. The next two buttons are what they're going to do is add it to every texture map or remove it from every texture map. So this is sort of a focus, whatever one's open. And the next two are for everything in the scene. So that's what those do. Uh, we'll go ahead and close that for right now. Okay, so almost done. Four buttons to go. The uh, These next two are going to add properties onto the object. So go ahead and click it. And this one is the multi-NIF export parameter. So we can define that this box is going into its own NIF comparatively to the sphere and to the uh, teapot here. And we can go ahead and name it whatever we want to name or uh, this box of awesome. So now whenever we go to export, you know, the base scene will be exported. But if we select the appropriate export script, these things will start getting dumped out as their own individual objects with their own little texture packs, all that good stuff. And the next button, actually, if you click it again, it'll ask you if you want to remove it. And there it goes. Next one is, is mesh profile. So we can define the mesh profile that we want to apply to the object on export. And then we can also remove it. These next two are debug. So a lot of just general information here taken out of the INI files. And then our root node user properties. Again, just a lot of uh, debug properties there. So that does it for the buttons. All right.